you know, one of the things that concerns me the most, and I bet that you felt the same way, is that particularly with what's been happening in Washington over the last few years, it seems like one of the rare areas of agreement in dealing with our national debt between the political parties, between the two uh, chambers, the House and the Senate, and between the White House and the Congress has been cutting farm programs. The next farm bill is going to be a tough one. We knew when we passed the 08 farm bill that the next one was going to be even tougher. But, you know, here we are, a strong ag sector that's allowed us to help sort of weather this economic storm we've been in. And it's almost like some people in other parts of the country think that if the farmers are doing well, something's wrong. And for your members, for your customers, I worry that we may be looking at a farm bill that will reduce the safety net, weaken the safety net for our farmers and ranchers, that will possibly undermine or eliminate an energy title, at least given some of the statements we've seen from some on the House Agriculture Committee, and not do enough in egg research. I mean, how many SDSU graduates do we have in the room? Plenty. Plenty. All the good people. <laughs> <laughs> We know how important, uh, and, and certainly in many of our lifetimes, when you look at the research uh, that Norman Borlaug undertook and how that acquisition of new knowledge has allowed us to be a leader in agriculture across the world and will continue to do so, we are at risk when you look at the percentage that other governments are putting toward agricultural research, particularly with some of our competitors in Brazil, that we could give up our competitive advantage by not investing a pretty small share of the pie in agricultural research, particularly with population projections that show we have to get even more off the land we currently cultivate to meet the food needs of people across the world in addition to what we want to do in providing energy as well. And that's where folks in this room folks that you work with in partnership in the private sector uh, really hold a lot of the keys to what we have to do in this era of restraint in government spending. And necessary for obvious reasons, but I'm afraid too quick to cut across the board rather than making strategic decisions about what the best investments and the best return on our dollars will be. But all of you, whether it's East River or the member co-ops, have a wealth of experience in making the kinds of decisions at a more local level, at the cooperative level, of making the hard decisions when you have to cut back or targeting resources in an area where you feel the analysis, the experience, reflects an opportunity to get a good return on that investment, whether it's five, seven, ten years down the road. And despite what's happening in Washington today, despite some of the policy challenges that we'll have to work through and the effective advocacy, uh, that we've had in the past working in partnership with all of you uh, within the congressional delegation in our state throughout our region to look out for rural America. The problem is the numbers just aren't there anymore. Members from rural America are outnumbered by folks in suburban and urban America. And that calls for action to stick together, to work together, to cooperate, to coordinate our efforts, whether we're in office, whether we are on the board of directors, whether we're in management, uh, whether we're in the private sector, finding the opportunities and the partnerships to tell our story, to make our best case, and to explain better for so many folks who aren't even familiar with the cooperative model anymore, what it is that we do, how we do it, how we can do it better, how we can benefit not just our region but the rest of the country. And so I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to be here with all of you. Uh, I am uh, eternally grateful for your support uh, over the years, not just of me and my office when I was in elective office, uh, but of the folks that are here in South Dakota are working in Washington, D.C. with the entire delegation, uh, because you bring to us a wealth of information uh, that helps inform our decision making and helps us find those collaborative partnerships in the public policy making process that can make a difference. 
Uh, and now that I'm in the private sector uh, and uh, enjoying the work that I'm doing with many here in South Dakota uh, and throughout our region, I look forward to our continued work together on areas of agricultural policy, renewable energy development, uh, and rural economies across the state. Thank you again for the Eminent Service Award. Uh, I'm eternally grateful, as I said. Thanks.